my dear comrades, and welcome back to the Ushanka Show. Здравствуйте, мои дорогие товарищи. В эфире программа Ушанка Show. My name is Sergei Sputnikov, and I was born in the USSR. Меня зовут Сергей Спутников, и я был рожден в Советском Союзе. So today we're going to cover the topic of the Soviet Postal Service and my experience that I had with that service in the 80s, a little bit in the 70s. But before we start, uh, we need to have a quick lesson of the Russian language. Почта. Почта. So почта can mean postal service. It also can mean your mail. So if they say to пришла почта, that you uh, receive mail, so почта, postal service, or your mail. Письмо. Письмо. Письмо means a letter. Открытка. Открытка. Postcard or just a card. So we just call them all открытки. We, or sometimes you could say почтовая открытка. Открытка. Postal card. Почтальон. Почтальон. That's the postman or mailman. Usually it's a mailman, a woman or man that delivers mail. Почтальон. It probably came from French. Postalion. <laughs> So when I visited Ukraine a couple of years ago, I actually uh, filmed the Soviet era mailbox uh, in a village nearby and that video didn't get a lot of views. So I will show you that short uh, video again. Uh, this is how the Soviet era mailboxes look like. Well, it's interesting. This is a Soviet era po uh, mailbox. So this is where you drop the mail. You open up and put the letter in there. I wonder if there's any letters still in there. Here used to be a symbol of Soviet Union, Gerb. That's the one with the sickles and... So that got popped out when Soviet Union disappeared. And here that's a, used to be Russian letters Pochta. So right here there's a letter Ch. Which they never bothered to replace the mailbox. They just painted in Ukrainian letters Pochta. So it's spelled P-O-S-H. TA in Ukrainian and PO CH TA in Russian. And then they started adding, of course, when Ukraine became independent, our mail zip codes changed. It used to be different zip code, I don't remember now, but they changed to Ukrainian. See, they put the new symbol says our post index, which is zip code 15213. And they then ch started changing when they remove mail. So originally it says letters will be removed at 1300 at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And then they added later except Wednesday, Monday, Sunday, Friday. And another day was added and raised. So pretty much never. Post office doesn't work and no one removes the letters from this mailbox. Yeah, I was wondering how you remove the letters. This is a little side access door. You need to have the key and you open it. It's maybe still some letters in there. It definitely wasn't used for a while. There's no one walking towards this mailbox. So the main difference between Soviet mail service and like mail service in the United States that our boys and girls postman Pachtalioni Besides mail, letters, uh, they also delivered our newspapers and magazines. So we didn't have anything like uh, here in America. Well, it used to be when uh, kids would ride the bikes or walk around and they tossed the newspapers on the front porch. Newspapers were delivered inside the mailboxes, just like letters. And another big difference that we never had anything like here in America. They have uh, these little silly looking postal trucks for the mail delivery in towns. And of course, out of town, they have like jeeps or other vehicles that they use to deliver mail. Um, everything was done on foot out in the country. A lot of times, uh, ladies mostly, they were post delivery people, mail delivery, and they used bicycles. And I think the major challenge for the Soviet post delivery people, Pachtalioni, which most of the time were ladies, was actually delivering newspapers. So if you look at the satellite photo, this is actually my apartment building back in Kiev. So this is nine story high, snake looking building, total of 
324 apartments. My family subscribed to three newspapers. So if we want to say that if the average maybe two newspapers, you're looking close to over 700 newspapers to be delivered just for this one building. And there were dozens of those in the area. And then, of course, letters on the top. But mostly, of course, most load was delivering newspapers. And here's the actual picture of our mailboxes. So this is the one for 36 apartments. They look way better in the 80s. This picture I took in early 2000 when I visited my family. Uh, they replaced them later, but this is, you know, you have a little gap on the top. It's when you slide in letters and newspapers. And then, of course, everyone has a key to open their lock. Uh, when things got rough uh, in Ukraine, uh, there were people breaking in, trying to steal, hoping maybe they can find some money. So eventually we put the lock on the entry door for these 36 apartments and uh, replaced the mailboxes. So now it looks way better. But this is what kind of general look of the mailboxes in Kiev, Ukraine. My friend Dima from Gomel, uh, Belarus, was very kind to take a photo of uh, his uh, mailbox in his apartment building. So this picture was taken a couple of days ago. Uh, so this is how they have. It's a different design, but same idea. You know, individual mailboxes, they'll have apartment numbers and then they're locked. And here's the video how you open it. And here's the photo of the postal service building. It probably was taken sometimes in early 80s, uh, late 70s. And of course, it could be a different look, like the one we had in Kiev looked different. And here's the picture of the postal office in the village of my grandparents in northern Ukraine. And it always looked just like that for years. I remember that look from 70s. And I'm very happy I found this photo. So this is the view inside of the postal office and that's how I remember it. You see it's COVID-19 friendly, got the glass separation between customers and uh, postal workers. Uh, on the left, there's the giant uh, scale that's to check the weight of the parcels that people uh, bring to ship. And then on the shelf, uh, different example of postcards for sale. As you see, there's no computers, no calculators, just the abascuses. And you just come and uh, do whatever you need to uh, have done for your mail. And there's another awesome insider shot. So there's the mail ladies uh, sorting out letters, postcards, and newspapers prior to delivery. So a lot of manual labor. It's probably the same here in America. But you got all these thousands of newspapers that they need to... Uh, find where it's going and give to every uh, mail delivery person. The cost to uh, send the postcard was four copecks. It was three copecks later, it was four copecks. So we didn't have inflation, but prices uh, slowly went up. So there's an the example. This is the back side of the postcard. And they printed the stamp. So when you buy a postcard, stamp already included. It's printed with it. So the total cost like of this postcard was five copecks. So four copecks stamp plus one copeck for a card itself. Another difference was how we wrote address and the name. So in America, you first you write the name of the person, then you write the address. In Soviet Union, it was the opposite way. So right below the stamp says Kuda, so that's where. So here you put the address. So you put, for example, Ukrainian Republic. Then you put a uh, town, more like Kiev. Then you put street and house number, apartment number. Then lay the last two lines, it's Kamu, so to whom. So there you put last name and then initials or first name. Below that, it says index предприятия связи и адрес отправителя. So here you put uh, who sent this postcard or kind of similar there is for the letter. On the left side, so on the top, you, that's where you write your message. And below, that's very interesting. It's called Index Предприятия Связи Место Назначения. So that's like a zip code of the destination. And you're supposed to fill it a specific way. 
and we had a special optical reading machine that could scan it, zip code, and it helped to sort the mail faster. So that was kind of interesting uh, equipment here. So in Russian, we're called zip code index, and here's the Soviet post stamp from 1977, and the lady pointing how you make the numbers in that spot for index, and it says index uh, will speed up letter delivery. And here's another stamp from the same postal service series from 1977 here, that pretty lady pointing at automatic machine for sorting letters. So this is what uh, the equipment we already had in 70s to speed up sorting the correspondence. And here you're looking at a classic example of the postal envelope that you could purchase. Stamp, once again, already pre-printed on the envelope, five copecks. So the total will be six copecks. Envelope, one copec, plus the stamp. Address on the right, return address on the back, index on the bottom left. And there always was some kind of picture. So a lot of Soviet-era envelopes actually became a collector's items because there were quite a variety of all kinds of different envelopes. And here's an example of the cancel envelope that was mailed can tell you from which town, looks like Chichersk, uh, Gomel region, Gomelska Oblast, so that's Belarus, and that was mailed, you see cancel stamp, and then on the bottom left, this is how you write index, so every number has a specific way, so seven looks kind of silly, and one definitely, uh, people here in America don't write one like that, and then have a picture of some military, um, Desantny Karabl na vazdušne podušnice military uh, craft for landing troops uh, on the beaches. Another difference between American and Soviet Postal Service there was hardly any stamps for sale in the Soviet postal offices because every letter, I mean every envelope and every postcard already had pre-printed stamps, so there was really no need to buy postal stamps. Here's another unique picture from the Soviet postal life. So you see those packages, we call them banderol. So that's a soft uh, packages that people could mail. You could use uh, like cloth or paper to wrap something. And I think this banderol is maybe came from English band, like a rope and roll. So you roll your package, then you bandage it. Uh, so this was one way of uh, mailing stuff will be using banderol. And here you're looking at Pasilka. So that was the standard box you could purchase. And you can put up to eight kilograms worth of goods. I think it's times three if you want to figure out in pounds, around 24, 25 pounds. Uh, as I said, it was standard size. And usually once you buy it, you just reuse it forever. You write the address in the ink pen, and then you can scrape it and write the new address. And sometimes if people mail back and forth to each other you just write one address on the one side of the board and then back side of the board has a different address to send back so for example you send presents to the village then your grandparents will pack presents back and they turn around the board nail it again and send it back to you so you could use the same box back and forth like forever and if you read my book american diaries 1995 i talked there about how my parents sent me birthday present in the summer from Kiev to the village and they'll ship me bananas and maybe some toys and that's what they use that wooden box that basilka and here's another picture from the Soviet postal office uh, the worker is wrapping the this wooden box basilka with the twine getting ready to be shipped and here's your standard gas GAZ post delivery truck so that's the one that takes mail and parcels and everything from the postal offices and take it to the sorting facility. For some reason, I only remember GAZ gas trucks being used for that. And here's your Soviet postal worker badge or lapel. It says Pochta. Here's a little bit of an unusual photo. Uh, so here we see a German soldier inspecting Soviet mailbox in Lviv, uh, Western Ukraine. So here's the example of the mailbox for like private households. If you live in a separate house, 
One of those looks like this. It says Le PCM e Gazette for letters and newspapers. And the owner has a lock so he can unlock it and get his stuff. And every major city like Moscow, Leningrad, Kiev uh, had somewhere in the downtown area so called Centralny Glav Pachtamt, Central Postal Office. So that would be like centralized uh, sorting facility, maybe. So this is the picture of the one we had in Kiev. Okay, let's see if I missed anything. Uh, so, was it efficient? I would say it was. I don't recall any problem with lost letters or lost mail. I mean, sometimes will something will be broken inside of the parcel, Pasilka, but otherwise it was pretty good. What services did the post offices offer? As I mentioned, pretty much uh, getting your mail, delivering your mail, and also providing deliveries for newspapers and magazines. Actually, I forgot to mention uh, the Soviet Postal Office also offered interesting uh, services called Davastrebovanya uh, upon request. So, for example, if you didn't have a mailing address and you didn't want to rent a P.O. box, we also had an option to rent a mailbox right at the postal office. Uh, you can ask your friend or whoever sends you a letter, say, hey, send uh, this letter to this specific postal office. So, for example, it would be key of 134. That's my area postal office. Davastrebevanya, upon request on my name. And then you show up with passport. And you ask, hey, uh, do you guys have a letter for me? And you show your password. And they will check. Like maybe this lady is checking. And she says, yeah, we got a letter for you. So we have this Davastrebevanya service for postcards and letters. Okay, what else? Uh, did people at all send letters to countries like USA, France, and West Germany? And how were these letters treated? I started corresponding with people from the other countries like in the end of the um, 1980s. Honestly, I don't know. I bet some letters were checked. I guess depending on where it was uh, sent, they could look at the address and just say, okay, we need to check this letter. I don't have any specific information, but knowing how nosy KGB was, I won't be surprised that they checked. A lot of correspondence. I know during the Stalin days I read that every letter going out of the Soviet Union was opened and checked. And I can't help but ask that the government ever read regular people's mail. As I said, during the Stalin regime it was 100%. Later I don't think that much. Well, my dear comrades, that's all I have to say about Soviet Postal Service. I hope you enjoyed this video, maybe learned something new. Uh, I used to work for a couple of months as a delivery guy for telegrams. So there'll be a separate video when I find time. But I think we covered the postal service quite in detail. But if you have any questions, please post below this video. We'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye. Hey, by the way, the cool merch for cool comrades is available at the Ushanka store at teespring.com. Just a friendly reminder that my book American Diaries is available on Amazon.com or shoot me an email if you would like to have a signed copy. Thank you! And if you love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Ushanka show. For as little as one dollar, you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life and so